As we move forward in the truth, we see more and more of the righteousness of Christ. Truth is what defines right and wrong for us and enables us to live in harmony with the law of God. Here is a little illustration to demonstrate the point. Suppose there was a man that lived a gluttonous life but did not know that it was wrong to do so. When this man comes to the faith and hears the truth that gluttony is sin, the word then works in his life to free him of his sin, and he then lives in harmony with the will of God. So, what was it that made the change? Was it not the word of truth? Now suppose this man should run out of truth, what would he then have to bring him more into the image of God? But you see, with an ever unfolding, ever progressive truth, this man will never cease to be made more into the image of God. This is why it is so important to have the living spirit of prophecy active in our midst. This is how we exchange our filthy rags for his beautiful garments, Isaiah 52, 1. Quote, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. End quote. Isaiah 55 verses 6 through 11. When we heed the above counsel and receive the straight testimony of the true witness, when we receive the correct understanding of the spirit of prophecy, then we will see that our own righteousness is as filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6, and we will finally be saved from our private opinions of what constitutes truth. Private Interpretation Quote, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost." End quote. 2 Peter 1, verses 19 through 21. It goes by without much notice, but private interpretation is the one sin above all others in the church that perpetuates unrighteousness. Why is this? By beholding we become changed. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. Therefore, if we are beholding a perversion of the truth rather than the truth itself, we become changed into that image. Our conception of truth, and thus righteousness, will define who we are and what decisions we make. Praise the Lord that he has decided to continue to send us his truth revealed through his prophets, Amos 3.7, so that we are not left to our own private opinions. Quote, and they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. End quote. Genesis 40, verse 8. Some feel that we should all be able to interpret the Bible as we please, but, quote, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? End quote. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 29. We have all been given different roles in the church. One major aspect of a prophet's role is to reveal the hidden things of God, Amos 3, verse 7. Should we follow our own devising, or should we follow the word of the Lord through the spirit of prophecy? Consider the following passages. Quote, Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Let them bring them forth, 
and show us what shall happen. Let them show the former things what they be, that we may consider them, and know the latter end of them, or declare us things for to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know that ye are gods. Yea, do good, or do evil, that we may be dismayed, and behold it together. Behold, ye are of nothing, and your work of naught. An abomination is he that chooses you. I have raised up one from the north, and he shall come. From the rising of the sun shall he call upon my name. And he shall come upon princes as upon mortar, and as the potter treadeth clay. Who hath declared from the beginning that we may know? And before time that we may say, He is righteous. Yea, there is none that showeth. Yea, there is none that declareth. Yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, Behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem one that bringeth good tidings. For I beheld, and there was no man, even among them, and there was no counselor, that, when I asked of them, could answer a word. Behold, they are all vanity, their works are nothing, their molten images are wind and confusion. End quote. Isaiah 41, verses 21 through 29. Quote, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. End quote. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Quote, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. End quote. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Conclusions thus far. The preceding information can be summarized in the following points. Number one, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Number two, the spirit of prophecy was in existence from the gates of Eden and will continue on until the second coming of Christ. Number three, Heaven's law and order is for God to speak through prophets. Number four, without living prophets, God's people perish. Number five, we are sanctified by truth, and thus the continual unfolding of truth through the spirit of prophecy is the method through which God designs to bring us to perfection. Number six, interpretations belong to God who reveals his secrets through his servants, the prophets. All of this leads us to the answer of our initial question, what is the spirit of prophecy? Number seven, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus by the Holy Ghost and through a living prophet, or the Holy Ghost speaking through a living prophet. Now the decision is up to you. Will you receive the love of the truth, or will you turn a blind eye to the plain word of God? Quote, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. End quote. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Quote, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. End quote. John 3, 19. Quote, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. End quote. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 10 through 12. Quote, Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy, and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. End quote. Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3.